how do I write off business startup expenses before the business actually starts making any money? LLC costs, education costs, travel expenses for business education, business essentials like phone, office, et cetera. What say you, Jeff Rowe? Uh, those expenses are tallied up and they are, um, there's actually two categories. There's the organization expenses for setting up the entity mm -hmm. uh, and there's startup expenses and they both have a $5,000 automatic expense line. Yes. And you have education that would lop into that. So let's go through these. Yep. LLC cost, is that startup or organization? Organization. Education cost, is that startup or organization? That That is a startup. Travel expense for the business education. Startup. Business essentials like phone, office, et cetera. Uh, startup. There you go. You can write off up to $5,000 of, of startup expenses, up to $5,000 of organizational expenses. Boom, immediately. If you go above that, you get to amortize them over 15 years. <laughs> Ugh. All right. Yeah. Over 15 years, you get to write them off. It's like a slow, painful process, but eventually you'll write them off. Now, if you have substantial education expenses, you're probably going to want a C Corp. That's the only place we can deduct those. Yes. We want to see what you're doing. We will make sure that we are treating it the best we can. Where can we find a list of write-offs in our category? <laughs> you talk to Jeff. Now there's uh we we I think we have a few of a bunch of different types of expenses, but it depends. It depends on what you're doing. It's just one of those weird things. Like I wish that there was a simple answer. There's not. It's section 162 of the Internal Revenue Code. It's reasonable and necessary for the type of business you're in. Cut reasonable, customary, and necessary, right? Or, I guess we could pull Amazon's chart of accounts. And... Custom, ordinary, reasonable, necessary. Yes. Yes. So you're just trying to write things up. You yeah, grab a chart of accounts of a big company and look at what they're using. And they all use different charts of accounts, by the way. And kind of look at it this way. I mean, what the definition you gave is, is this really a business expense? It, am I spending money for the business or mm -hmm. did, did I just feel like I needed a new lawnmower? Yeah, and get this. So if you have one of these things, a cell phone, it's my wife. Mm -hmm. Now she's gone. There she is. People are like, what do you got on your phone? Um, it's my beautiful wife. Sandra. Uh, so if I have one of these and I want to write it off and I am a sole proprietor, I'm in a partnership, I can only write off the business expense with this. Mm -hmm. Who the heck tracks their phone? Like, here's my business phone. Here's my, like, maybe you get a different phone for your business, right? It's just annoying. If I am an employee of an organization, so I have an S corp or a C corp and I work for it, my employer can reimburse me hundred percent of this. Yep. So if I work for Jeff's CPA firm and I'm like, hey, I use this phone to benefit, you know, I do as part of my duties, Jeff could reimburse me 100% of not just the data and the cell, also the phone itself, 100%. And the trick question is, where do I report it? I don't. I don't have to, it's no different than if your employer said, hey, on the way in the office, pick up some pizzas and I'll reimburse you. The employer is going to write off the pizza. When they write you a check or hand you cash mm -hmm. to reimburse you, you don't have to put it anywhere. There's no there's no line item on your 1040 that says reimbursed expenses. Doesn't exist. So you're just you're 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 uh you're good. Yeah. Somebody says you can look at forms on the internet or for, oh, yeah, the forms are found on the website. So we have some of those where we have a whole list of different things. So all you have to ask yourself is is this the type of expense that would benefit like there's all sorts of things. Meals. Hey, I'm meeting with a prospect. Uh, I'm traveling for my business. Hey, I'm going to an event for realtors and I'm a realtor and I'm trying to get continuing education or whatnot. Yeah, that's deductible. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm driving around. How about the mileage? Yep, I can write that off. Uh, hey, I'm, I spend money on paper and a printer and some computers and, a, and, and I have to get some subscriptions. Yeah, all that's reasonable, ordinary, necessary. Uh, hey, my, uh, if somebody says the Anderson event, yes. 100% deductible. Uh, how about if I go to a golf course? The IRS is going to say, probably not because that's not where business really takes place, even though it's where business actually takes place. And they're going to classify it. It used to be you could write off entertainment, no more. Yeah, they did away with that. I guess who did away with that? Before everybody, like, Tax Cut and Jobs Act. That was the Trump administration. He got rid of the dang golfing and entertainment, except- and he owns golf courses. Yes, like, come on. Chow, chow, chow. 
self-inflicted wound. Hey guys, if you like this snippet of Tax Tuesday, then I invite you to click the link and actually subscribe to become a Tax Tuesday member. Every other week, we do these live and you too can ask your questions and myself and my team will answer your questions on the next Tax Tuesday.